Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry and uh, today I'm going to be working on this Japanese black pine. It's in fact the third part of a four-part series that I'm doing on black pines that I've grown from seed. So as I mentioned, this tree has been grown from seed and more specifically from a seedling cutting. Now because of that, I have budding very low down on the tree. Very often if you allow a black pine just to extend without treating it as a cutting, it has a fairly long uh, length of trunk before you start getting uh, buds. And uh, so this is the benefit, especially if you're going to be creating shohin trees, so very small trees, to use seedling cuttings to do it with, um, because it does give you the ability to have uh, buds low down or produces buds low down in the tree that you can create structural branches with. And also it's very important, and you'll see from this trunk, the movement in it, uh, to in the second year of growth to give it some very exaggerated curves with wire and this results in a very interesting trunk. Uh, you do it when it's very young because it's impossible obviously to put these exaggerated curves into the trunk when the tree gets a little bit older and the wood is thicker. Um, and then also you can see the use of sacrifice branches has contributed greatly to the caliper the girth of the trunk and also the taper. Um, so this is another technique that I'm using to, to grow this tree and there are several of these branches. In the long term these branches will be reduced and replaced by other branches to eliminate or to, to limit the, the size of the scar that is left by the branch. Um, but those scars are nevertheless healed over quite quickly on Japanese black pine, particularly because the trunk or the, the bark rather, should I say, is quite, is, is of it, of it uh, characteristically um, very coarse. Aside from the use of sacrifice branches to fatten up the trunk, I also used wire and uh, it's known as cage wiring. It's where you wrap a fairly thick wire around the trunk quite tightly and uh, the trunk will expand in an effort to press up against or resist that, that pressure from the wire and in so doing it swells up so it thickens up a little bit faster and I believe I have a video for that that I've done previously that I'll link to on your screen now. The tree's been growing in this container now for two years and it's now a good time to, it's the beginning of spring and um, I'm going to repot it. Uh, this will, uh, obviously by now I expect to find fairly coarse roots in, in, in the container and I need to cut those back to uh, generate a fibrous, a finer root system. And uh, so I'm going to remove the tree from the container and then we're going to process the root ball. So if you've got tie down wires, just check the bottom. I do. You can uh, cut that. And um, <clears throat> this will make it possible to pull the tree out of the container. Um, but at the moment, obviously, because it's had two years of growth, the, the roots will have filled the container. So now I'm using a sickle and I just quickly remove a little bit of the growing medium between the root ball and the inner wall of the container. It helps a lot if you allow the tree to dry out for a couple of days before you do this, it just makes it easier for the media to come out of the, the container or just to do the work generally. Be careful where you hold, you don't want to break buds, little buds off the trunk, so make sure that where you're holding doing this work that it's not likely to damage anything. So I'm holding on to the rim of the container and I'm just making several turns around and probably about now uh, there's enough of a separation for me to be able to lever the tree out of the pot. So as I mentioned already, this is the timing now is early spring and if you want to confirm that it's a good time to do your repotting, 
then when you lift the tree out of the container, you'll see, or you should see, all these white tips of the roots. So these are the new roots that are, that are extending or developing. So the tree is active, and uh, so therefore confirmation that uh, we can go ahead with the repotting at this time. Before I carry on with cleaning out the old root ball, I'm just gonna prepare the pot so that once uh, the tree is done, it can go straight into the new pot. Now you can wash the container out if you want to. If the, if the tree had uh, root rot or some other root related issue or root aphids or something, then I would encourage you to wash the container. But otherwise it's not really necessary and in fact uh, this should be inoculated with uh, mycorrhiza, at least I would think so. And uh, so that would, um, so it's already inoculated and it, there's nothing, there's no real need for you to clean the container out. So we're going to uh, position the drainage mesh back again over the, 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 the hole of the container and this prevents the medium from washing out when you water. So what you want to do is uh, get a piece of aluminium wire. This is uh, I believe two millimeter wire and you want to measure this uh, uh, that the that the wire fits perfectly in the hole. So it mustn't be loose, otherwise the mesh can move around or be dislodged when you start filling up the container with soil. You just simply push it through and anchor it on the reverse side. And then we can just cut these little, you can either cut off the, you can cut off the excess wire, or if you prefer, and I find this makes it a little bit stronger, is just to give it a bit of a kink and And that wire is not going, that mesh is not going to go anywhere. Now we need to use some tie down wires because once the, once the tree ball, root ball has been worked on, it's going, going to be very unstable in the container. And that is not very conducive to the formation of new roots. So we may want to make sure that the tree cannot move at all once it's placed back into the container and certainly not knocked out of the container. If the container that you're using doesn't have holes, uh, you can either drill some new holes with a diamond uh, or tile, but usually diamond drill bits work the best. Uh, or alternatively, you can use the center hole and just use a piece of wire, a thick piece of wire, almost as a peg across there and then just wire, put a loop of wire through. Okay, and that's now ready. Once again, be careful where you're holding. You can see I'm holding at the very base of the trunk so that I don't damage any of these buds further up. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut the, the mat of roots that have developed at the base of the container. And to do this, I'm again using my root sickle because it's got teeth and it acts as a knife. And it's actually this root pad or layer of roots that, that typically would push the tree out of the container if you neglect to repot it for too long. Uh, this is actually what's pushing the tree out of the container. So we don't need that. Now, the next thing is to cut the sides. This is roots. These roots would have been those that were coiling around the, and around the container. So we can just cut that off immediately. And it helps uh, when we get, it helps the next, the next step um, to, to be done a little bit more smoothly. I'm using a sharpened, well, a dulled screwdriver that's been brought to a point uh, to work the root ball. And yeah, the objective is to gently prod the, grow, the root ball to eliminate the old growing media. And you're going to do this by working from the outline or the, out, the, the outer extremities of the root ball towards the trunk. And this is because when you work from the outside in, it, it provides uh, space 
for the growing media to, to move to. And uh, so the action is a, a bit of a stabbing sort of action, uh, but you don't want to go too hard. Um, you don't want to grasp the tool too firmly. You do want to allow that if you do hit something solid, like a, a thicker root in the root ball, that, the, that you won't be stabbing it and damaging it. And, and, and so don't hold the, don't hold the too, too, tool too firmly. Um, and then just take your time and slowly work around the roots um, jabbing into them and then almost like a, a push a, a, a straight down action and then pulling towards you but if you meet too much resistance then don't force it because you'll be ripping roots but eventually you tease the roots out and uh, this is the best um, this sets up the root uh, the, the nabari or the root system for the future as well because you don't want roots running or coiling around the trunk they must radiate from the center to the outline or to the outside okay i've removed all the old soil and now i'm just going to inspect inspect the root ball and uh, see if there's any roots that are growing upright uh, which need to be uh, cut away uh, you might be able to reorientate the roots as well and uh, if they keep on moving around you can anchor them into the soil with wire um, otherwise they can just be cut off if you do need to cut roots I would encourage you to use a scissors that you reserve specifically for that for, for, for cutting roots don't use the same scissors that you use on your branches uh, because uh, roots uh, or s the stones that you're likely to encounter or the um, lava or whatever medium that you're using is going to dull the, the, the scissors very quickly. And then you want to look at thicker roots like this one and cut these shorter uh, because you want to encourage a more fibrous root system. Uh, bearing in mind also obviously that this is a shohin or will be a shohin bonsai and uh, so it's going to go into a very small container and so you need to encourage um, a more fibrous root system which can support the amount of foliage that you in, uh, in the long term will have on the tree but in a very confined space. You can see this root over here is it's going straight down. Uh, that's not a good root to keep, so we want to reduce that. Any roots that are growing straight down into the medium, especially it, this one was also growing down, but it's still flexible enough to, to be reorientated. And uh, so you need to remove those downward growing roots as much as possible. So this is now the root ball after it's been processed and it's now ready to be repotted. Um, so it's, it's really been uh, flattened, so all the downward growing roots has been reduced and I've cut back uh, any coarse roots as well. Uh, see there's another little root that remains there that can be trimmed. And now we can go ahead and secure this into the container and uh, finish the repotting. So I'm going to be using equal parts of Akadama lava and pumice with a little bit of uh, agricultural carbon added to that and I made a little bit of a mound to position the tree on top of and then the planting angle the the base of the tree should be at the same height as the lip of the container and this is to ensure that uh, water is not going to run off uh, to the sides and, um, and that it acts as a larger reservoir for water when you are watering. So it just makes watering easier. And also exposing, the tr if the tree is too high, I don't really like that look because it almost looks as though the tree is perched on top of an island or something. So um, make sure that you get the tree uh, at the correct planting angle. So you, you're gonna little do wiggle-like actions. And this also ensures that 
because of the mound that you created, soil is definitely going to get underneath the, ba the base of the trunk. You definitely don't want a void over there. It's very difficult to chopstick soil into that space afterwards and uh, roots are not going to grow there. So it's gonna become this dead zone. Um, you, you definitely want to avoid that. And then after doing that, you're gonna then take your tie down wires and, um, and pull them across the base and you wanna get a good anchoring position for, for them. This is going to ensure that if the wind blows, a cat walks past, a kid walks past, <laughs> that the tree is not going to get dislodged and uh, get knocked out of the container. So it's always a good idea to, rip, to wire your trees into the, the container when repotting them. Now the tree is nice and firm. If you wiggle it around, you can see that it's not moving in the container. This root over here, I'd like to position it. And uh, one way that we can do that is to use a little wire. Uh, so use a slightly thicker wire, say two millimeters, uh, maybe two and a half millimeters. Using your pliers, make a little crook, almost like a shepherd's crook. And now you're going to insert this around the side of the, uh, the, the, the root and push it, push this down. And it must be pushed at an angle, very horizontal angle, otherwise it's not gonna have any strength. And now that wire has been repositioned. This thin, thinner wire that's next to it over here can, can just be held down by the weight of the media. And anyway, I'm just topping up with a bit of growing medium. And then, oops, sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to chopstick that in. It's very important to perform this next step thoroughly. Um, and this is essentially making sure that all the areas between the roots have uh, been filled with growing medium. Roots won't grow into open spaces and uh, so it's important to do this next step correctly. And also it's very important to do this step with dry media uh, because if it's wet, it doesn't flow uh, as easy as it does when it's dry. Uh, I would say it's almost impossible to ensure that you will get a decent um, filling, so to speak, if, if you use wet media. So use it dry, completely dry, um, and then it's a poking action, sort of jabbing at it again. A chopstick works very well, but you can just, just as well use anything um, that's blunt. You don't want to be stabbing and damaging roots. And it's quite easy to feel as well when, when you have found a, a void. Uh, firstly, you can see that media is not sinking into that area anymore. And also the chopstick meets more resistance uh, when the area is filled. Once you've chopsticked the soil in, and use the spatula side of a rake, um, rake spatula combination tool or just some other flat um, object to really just settle the soil ag again. I mean, the chopsticking is the main part of the process, but this definitely helps as well just to um, almost creating a small vibration because you're not forcing it down you're just really tapping it and that helps to settle the medium uh, the particles to shift nice and close together so as soon as i'm finished doing this uh, and the soil has been tamped down i'm going to water thoroughly with a fine spray and uh, you got to thoroughly douse it with water to make sure that uh, any dust that is in the container in the medium is flushed out well as much of it as possible and so water it very thoroughly until the water runs clear from the drainage holes at the bottom okay that was uh, the work on this tree for today 
Um, so for those, the growing season ahead, obviously the sacrifice branch that I've got going here uh, will continue to develop and as it does so it will be thickening the base of the tree. I'll also keep the sacrifice branches and um, I, I probably for another season at least will keep these sacrifices and then start replacing them one at a time. Um, and then possibly look at reducing the sacrificial leader and replacing it with one of these buds that are lowered down as the new trunk line or a continuation of the trunk line. So obviously the intended uh, style for this tree is a shohin in a moyogi or informal upright style. Um, so the final tree is probably going to be about this big. And... Um, so all the work that has been done to date on this tree is uh, one, to get as good a nabari as it possibly can and also to get a very chunky tapering trunk. Um, and that is what the focus of all my techniques have been uh, uh, up until uh, now. Um, but uh, of course these buds, given that it is a seedling cutting, is going to be uh, critical for the future of this tree because it's with those buds that I'm going to develop the structural branches of the tree. But that is not something that I'm going to be focusing too much on now. However, it's very important that I keep those buds alive and very healthy. And I do that by uh, making sure that I remove needles uh, on the sacrifices and position them in such a way or grow them in such a way that this part of the tree still gets uh, sunlight. Uh, without sunlight, if it's shaded out, then those buds will get progressively weaker and potentially die. And then the only solution to that will be to either through um, a redistribution of energy on the tree, producing, uh, 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 producing adventitious budding, or alternatively having to graft, uh, which obviously is a lot more effort. So let's see if we can keep these buds growing. Um, but all in all, very happy with the progress. Probably only about, I, I believe this is uh, four years old now, four growing seasons behind us. It's going into its fifth growing season. And uh, from seed, I'm very happy with the progress. I hope that this uh, episode, this third episode in the four part series has been um, uh, uh, a good source of inf information and hopefully inspiration for you to to grow your own Japanese black pine from seed. All right, thank you very much for joining me and uh, until next time, if you haven't done so yet, please do like and sub subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the notification bell and then you will be notified when I upload the next video and uh, that is generally on a Friday afternoon. So until next time, take care and thank you, goodbye.